network here. Um, the first is we had discussed this in the last quarterly meeting, but the progress report, um, the first round of progress reports, I should say, uh, will be due in April of 2024. So please keep that on your radar and please keep that in mind, um, especially um, considering the fact that they changed the timeline for this round. So you do have additional time to make sure that your reports are, are more comprehensive, um, as well as further putting this down the line. Um, the second progress reports will be due um, around the October 2024 timeframe. So we do have time, but please just make sure that you keep that in the back of your mind. Um, another thing I wanted to quickly touch on is um, there's been a lot of activity among across the country, um, across different stick networks at different state DOTs. Um, a lot of those um, recording, those webinars were recorded and are available in case you happen to miss it. Um, the Center for Accelerating Innovation, the Federal Highways Innovation website will have a lot of those resources in case you want to reference those and go back um, and look at those on your own. Um, I also wanted to mention that there were a couple of uh, A demo grants that have been um, so even rolling out. Um, for those of you that are unaware, um, <clears throat> Um, a stands for um, Accelerated Innovation Deployment Demonstration. So um, these grants are, uh, you know, local governments and MPOs are encouraged to apply to these. But however, they um, you will have to be a sub recipient under NJDOT if you are interested. Um, I didn't see anything in regards to fiscal year 23. Um, the notice of intent was yesterday, December 12th. So I um, fear like we probably would have heard something by now, but in case there wasn't and might not just might not have heard yet on um, the application deadline is January 23rd, 2024. And supposed to be your 24 application cycle actually opens up pretty soon as well on um, February 27th of 2024. Um, the notice of intent deadline is April 16th, 2024. And there's a closing deadline for that on May 28th of 2024. Um, and lastly, um, I'm gonna put this in the chat here in a second, but um, I would encourage everyone to sign up for the EDC newsletter. Um, there's a lot of good information that digests periodically, um, not just here in New Jersey, but across the country and seeing what different stick networks are up to. So I'm gonna um, share this here in the chat here in a second, but I encourage you all just to have that just so you can see and be added to the distribution list so you're aware of what's going on, um, as well as we build our, um, as we continue out the life cycle of uh, EDC7. So um, that was all I had, um, and I'll go ahead and share this in the chat. and. Um, if anybody else, I'm not sure if Robert was able to join yet, or, but if anyone else has anything from Federal Highway, um, you know, please feel free to jump in if you'd like. Uh, uh, Sal had a question. Yes, yes. Um, uh, we haven't heard anything, Sal. Uh, I don't know, um, Chris, did you hear anything about the EMR grants, Accelerating Market Readiness Grant? I haven't heard have anything. No, but if I do, I'll uh, make sure I share it with the um, statement that we're here. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. So next, we'll be hearing from our core innovation area leads. And I'll continue sharing my screen. So just tell me next uh, if I haven't advanced the slide already. And we're going to start with the safety team. So first up, please welcome Dan Lasanti and Amy Kaminsky from our safety CIA team. OK, um, how is everybody? Um, first, Amy, you do want to let the folks know that Alan will be taking the lead on this. Yes, um, we're it's so hard to see in these thumbnails who's what. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, Alan's joined the, the division. He's the new safety specialist. I've been faking at it for the last year, so hopefully mm -hmm. y'all aren't disappointed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I will continue to participate in the stick, and uh, I'll be working with Alan, but he will be the lead person working with Dan on uh, safety with Jeevan and Dan. So Great. Good to know. Thanks, Alan. We go to the next slide there, Amanda. Sure. And so everybody knows Amy's been doing a great job. Don't let her sell herself short. Um, Absolutely. She's, yeah, she's a even outside of stick. She's she's doing a great job with the HSIP and all the safety efforts. And um, 
she kind of leads both now, right? I mean, you have you have ITS and safety. You oversee both of them. So she's not going away anywhere. So yeah, she's um, pretty obnoxious. She can't yeah, get herself out yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll get into this. Um, we have two initiatives under EDC seven um, for safety. Um, you know, the lighting initiatives, and they're you know it's, it's really good. It's really good timing because we've been pursuing this. Um, you know, trying to you know put more lighting initiatives out. Um, you know, especially for pedestrians. Um, as everybody should be aware, um, our pedestrian numbers in the state of New Jersey are rather high as a percentage of fatalities. Um, roughly around 25 to 30 percent on an annual basis are pedestrian fatalities. So these initiatives are really good. Um, both initiatives are um, NJDOT led initiatives. So we'll go over the first one first. Um, so as part of NJDOT's research task for the New Jersey Bicycle and Pedestrian Resource Center, staff at Rutgers for his transportation center in partnership with Rowan University are investigating best practices for street lighting with a focus on vulnerable roadway users. The target audience for this task, um, actually the target audience for the soon to be developed guide is the county and municipal governments with the intent of assisting them identify and implement lighting in their communities to serve pedestrians and bicyclists. The literature review phases of the project are ten tentatively complete, um, and we have begun the process of outlining and drafting the guide. As part of this process, we have begun identifying key examples and best practices for types and placements of lumineers, which are best for reducing fatalities and serious injuries. The next step for this project include complete a list of land use and road characteristics, for which we will provide lighting design recommendations. Compare available lighting quantities, LED or high pressure sodium. Identify best practices for cost effectively upgrading older, less efficient fixtures to newer LEDs. And lastly, produce the final deliverable guide. Next, please. Okay, this is the second activity. Um, this is led by our traffic engineering group at NJDOT um, through a task order contract, um, which they're developing um, traffic signal pole and masked arm details based on 2015 ASTO requirements for signalized intersections, installations, including backplates with retro reflective tape on traffic signal indications. Once the new details are completed, the NJDOT will require all new installations to include backplates and retro reflective tape on all signal indications. At this time, um, NJDOT Bureau of Traffic Engineering, they have been installing backplates on signal heads installed on st steel mast arms whenever possible. A quick, a quick briefing on um, where the effort is, is basically um, comments from the first draft submission for steel poles or mast arms less than 25 feet is being discussed between our structural group, our geotechnical and consultant designer, as well as traffic engineering. A couple of meetings have occurred to date um, to discuss these comments. Um, the consultant designer is also coordinated with the pole manufacturers um, regarding um, a few concerns that were brought up by our structural um, engineers. The draft of the basis of design for aluminum poles has been reviewed by the department. Um, so we're making progress on this task. We're coming along. It's um, all positive signs. This is something that, um, you know, getting those back plates with retro reflective um, um, tape, um, it gives you a 15% reduction um, in fatality crashes. Um, so it's a good countermeasure to install. So we're working towards, you know, getting them implemented in as many um, configurations as we can. So this is a very good effort. Um, one other thing I want to bring up, though, is, um, I just want to note that NJDOT is, um, has also requested training from the um, FHWA Resource Center. Um, thank you, Resource Center, on the following items. Um, vertical and horizontal illuminants for mid-block crosswalks. <laughs> vertical and horizontal illuminants for crosswalks at unsignalized intersections. Lighting for crosswalk on ramps and jug handles. Tunnel lighting. Lighting for bicycle lanes lighting for roundabouts and crosswalks at these roundabouts and sidewalk lighting. 
So the um, department's doing a lot of good things to try to advance the lighting initiative. Um, again, before the initiative um, EDC 7 even came out, we were looking at a lot of these, but it's just puts a little bit more focus. So these are good things and um, I thank everybody for their help. And I thank the other, you know, we're just reporting out. That's our job here, um, but um, you know, we're, we're involved in these tasks as well. So um, that's all I have. Anything to add, Amy or Alan? I do not have anything to add. Nice job. Alrighty, guys. Back to you, Amanda. Thanks, everybody. Great. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, moving on. Oh. Quick, Dan. When when you get those that that guidance about horizontal, vertical, and roundabout uh, lighting, um, please mm -hmm. share with the group. Um, we're looking at that stuff yeah. too, and I don't want to duplicate efforts. No Thank problem. you. Awesome. But we're gonna have um actually. It's going to be training, so um, whoever wants to, if you want to th throw your name right in that chat, maybe we'll yeah, get Yeah, can that, that be open training. to the counties? What's that? Is Try that to get open many. to counties? It hasn't been laid out, so I'm sure if you, you know. Yes, so please. We could, we could get you in, yeah, definitely. So Thanks. just shoot, shoot me an email, and when that comes out, we'll touch base. How's that? Awesome. Thanks. Yep, no problem. Okay. Thank you very much, Dan and Amy. <clears throat> Next is Shivani Patel and Nunzio Merla from our infrastructure preservation team. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shivani Patel, and I'll be providing the updates for the infrastructure preservation initiatives, beginning with internally cured concrete. Since September, the internally cured concrete initiative has made some significant advancement towards achieving key milestones under the leadership of Samar Ravi and Jess Mendenhall. Next slide, please. The EPIC 2 special provisions were revised after the peer review and comment resolution. The review of draft specifications were done by the FHWA Resource, uh, Resource Center. Team members continued communication with New York State DOT materials personnel, which focused on batch plant procedures and best practices. Team members participated in the kickoff meeting for the extend service life of concrete bridge decks with internal, internal curing research project on December 1st. The team plans to meet on a monthly basis to acquire status updates on each phase. The team is currently working on expanding the list of candidate bridges to include full replacement projects. Only deck replacement and superstructure replacement projects were previously scoped. The team members are also investigating a new mix design for internal curing in addition to the modified HPC mix design. In the next quarter, the team will circulate the draft special provisions for internal NJDOT divisional review. They plan to reach out and communicate with concrete suppliers to gauge readiness for producing internally cured concrete and discuss implementation challenges. Team members will also connect with project designers for the selected and upcoming projects. The team is also exploring applicable, applicable federal grant opportunities to help advance the internal curing um, application, particularly the aid demonstration program. So I have an update on an EDC, on an EDC 6 UHPC innovation. Um, on October 13th, the Bureau of Structural Engineering hosted a training by HNTB titled Recent Advancements for the Use of UHPC in Infrastructure Applications. This training built on the progress from the EDC6 UHPC in innovation. The team is also continuing the UHPC Overlay Performance Evaluation Program. Non-destructive testing on the two bridges is scheduled for next week. The two selected bridges for the monitoring program are uh, 295 northbound and 130 northbound over Mantua Creek in Cluster County and NJ 159 westbound over Passaic River in Morris County. The 295 bridge has received an asphalt surface course on the 
on top of the UHPC overlay. And the Route 159 bridge has UHPC for the final surface. The primary objective of the two-year monitoring program is to assist NJDOT in evaluating the structures that were part of the UHPC overlay research project to verify the significant voids um, are not encountered and that an intact bond of the UHPC to the existing concrete substrate exists and the desired conditions are maintained in the future. The baseline was established in 2022, and next week, the second testing within the program will be conducted using shear wave tomography um, with no pouring this year. Okay, moving on to the Environmental Product Declarations Initiative. Since September, there has been progress on the planning efforts for the Environmental Product Declarations Initiative. Next slide, please. An SME team meeting was held on October 24th where preliminary research findings and next steps were discussed. During this meeting, an outline of the work plan was shared. Shortly following the meeting, we developed a work plan and corresponding spreadsheet with, with assignments. The first phase of the work plan is research, um, which includes four simultaneous efforts and it has commenced. The four efforts consist of researching EPD guidance and information from states that legislated greed in pur purchasing, researching EPD guidance and information from states that have considered green purchasing legislation, developing and obtaining a list of NJDOT approved materials lists, and researching the status of the New Jersey EPD legislation. The anticipated duration for the first phase is approximately three months. Team members have begun working on phase one research efforts. These four simultaneous efforts also require staff to prepare and send questionnaires to other state DOT agencies and material suppliers. The staff will continue um, process uh, of research and learning more about EPDs and the current best practices. In the next couple of months, the team will meet again to discuss research findings and determine the directions of our to be effort. In the meantime, we're hoping to identify additional SMEs to join the EPD team. Next slide, please. Thank you. I think that was it. Okay, thank you so much, Shivani. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I had a question for Shivani. But um, so who um, I mean, are all the SMEs from NGDOT or do you have for EPD or do you have other stakeholders also in the group? Currently, we're, they're just internal SMEs. OK, and then when you say that you are encouraging other SMEs to join, does that mm -hmm. mean just NGDOT again or? Are you recruit? Are you asking people from uh, other agencies also to join? We haven't reached out um, to other agencies, um, but that's part of this first um, research effort. So hopefully, we'll be able to get um, other states involved. Okay, but it's it's even if it's states, it's going to be the state DOTs. Right. Yep. State agencies. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, Thanks, thank Imani. you so much. Great job. Good job. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, so next up is Crystal Walker and Chris Page from our Organizational Support and Improvement CIA team. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Just give me some few updates. So currently we're still in the implementation um, phase, the de development stage um, of our um, program. So as of last uh, meeting, we developed and submitted a proposal and the current updates is based on the um, submitted proposal. Um, it is being asked to provide additional details regarding the NJ Built Fund grant. And currently they are requesting additional details and it's currently being drafted. So um, there is additional information that will need to be um, 
provided at the current moment and is still being um, drafted now. So hopefully next meeting we'll have all of those updates and more definite information will be provided. Next slide. So at the last meeting, we were working with the Office of the Federal Contractor Compliance Program, so OFCCP. So the collaboration is continuous and based on recommendations from this group, a few of the contract compli compliance unit staff members have participated in various webinars aimed at strategic workforce development in highway uh, in the highway construction industry. And in addition to this, um, there are additional I receive additional information from Vicki who's heading this um, initiative um, and she is over the civil rights division here at NJDOT so I did receive additional updates so she did want me to provide that ongoing discussion topics with the OFCCP does include how to outreach and engage with all stakeholders to include state and federal agencies, contractors, unions, community organizations, vocational schools and training organizations that provide pre apprenticeships and other related trainings and um, serve all demographic groups. Also to provide ongoing compliance assistance at the pre and post bid stage of prime and subcontractors on the efforts to support a, div a diverse workforce. Next, they're also discussing removing hiring barriers and promoting promoting um, consideration of a diverse pool of qualified workers for jobs in the highway construction trades. Next, they are also discussing how to encourage contractors to use their current minority and female employees as a recruitment source. Next, they are also working with contractors who are um, col within collective bargaining agreements um, so they can use this information to make union representatives aware of union referrals on their efforts to provide EEO in their workforce. And lastly, they're also talking about how to effectively apply on the job training program, so OJT, requirements on federally funded unionized uh, projects to effect effectively gain um, within the workforce. She also did mention um, she has not got the unions to the table yet, so that's an ongoing, but we definitely need uh, union buy-in when it comes to this initiative. Um, and there's no current update with the state funding request um, information when it comes to providing um, updates to the Department of Labor. So a lot of things are still ongoing when it comes to um, with the unions being at the table, but at least the OFCC has provided a lot of additional resources with getting things moving forward. And that's the current update. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> that Thank was great, you. Crystal. Thank you so much, Crystal and Chris. OK, uh, next we have Simon Wachakwu. Uh, he's standing in for Sadir Joshi. Um, and we also have Satapa Bandio Padye with updates from our planning and environment team. So, Amanda, what Patrick, I'll do, I'll give you quick, Simon, I'll give you quick, uh, quick overview. Oh, you are here. You Hi. Like, <laughs> yes, I had to get up by 11, so I wasn't oh, sure okay. how long it's going to last. Oh, good. All right, so, Perfect. Few things I want to just talk about planning. We have submitted our SPR work program to uh, CPC workflow, and I thank everyone, every job managers who are uh, able to submit to the CPC workflow. And this year we are early because we know all the vacations are coming up in NJDOT as well as Federal Highway. So thank you, everyone. Uh, second thing, you know, Simon is going to talk about the uh, greenhouse gas which is the final rule so you know issued last week and we have to submit our targets by february 1st so we are going to be having you know two meetings in january you know we have discussed that at our last complete team meeting we're going to have two meetings with the team members and we're going to come up with the targets hopefully you know i'm surely not hopefully but we have to come up with 
by mid January and shared with the upper our senior leadership so that they can also uh, chime in and they can provide the input. And Simon, you can go ahead and talk. So I'm done with my uh, update. Thanks, Adir. Thank you. OK, thank you. My name is Simon Wachuku from Statewide Planning NJDOT. Today we would like to share what we are doing on CMAC traffic congestion, roadway emission, national performance measure on greenhouse gas emission reduction. Um, we are going to see what the map here and the tables that follow reflect changes that occurred after October 1, 2021, and on or before October 1, 2023. The emission measure is applicable in state DOT, whether where any one or more area are designated as non attainment or maintenance for ozone 3, uh, carbon monoxide, PM10. PM 2.5 National Ambient Air Quality Standard. Uh, next, uh, here at State DOT New Jersey, DOT is required to establish target and report performance for the CMAC emission measure with applicable NAQS and precursor pollutant. We are required to report measure PM 2.5 2008, ozone 2008, ozone 2015, and VOC and NOx. We are among the 30 states that will be required to establish target and report for the on road source emission measure. Next, please. Next, please. There's a, a little bit of a delay. Go ahead. Yeah, OK. Uh, yeah, th this table too showed NJDOT required to establish target and report progress for the traffic congestion measure applicable to urbanized area. Here in New Jersey, where our urbanized area are PA, New Jersey DE, and Maryland. Another urbanized area is New York, Newark Session, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Trenton, New Jersey, Allentown, Bessel, New Jersey. The, we are required to uh, report the similar con the condition, traffic congestion measure there. Next, please. Yeah, New Jersey is required to or uh, MPOs, applicable MPOs for the on-road mobile source emission measure and uh, the CMAC performance plan. In New Jersey, we have three MPOs, the DVRPC, NJTPA, and South Jersey Transportation Planning Organization. They are required to report National Ambient Air Quality Standard for the PM 2.5, PM ozone, and the ozone 2018, including VOC and the NOx. Next, please. Yeah, this is the new program that just came up this month, and. Uh, which is uh, assessing performance of national highway system, greenhouse gas emission. DOTs and MPOs to establish decline carbon dioxide targets and report on progress towards the achievement of these targets. Um, we are required to set target for this, and the FHA finalize, is finalizing a reference year of 2022 
as part of this rule. The performance period for the GHG measure will begin January 1, 2022 and extend four years. In the final rule, FHW established that state DOT will establish initial target for the GHG measure and report them no later than February 1, 2024. And so for this measure, we are going to listen to FHW today by 11 a.m. How, what we are going to do and how we are going to do it. But basically, we are going to establish the target by February 1, 2024. So this is a new task and is a fast task that we need to accomplish from now to February 1, 2024. Uh, next, please. Yeah, this is our report due dates and current status. State DOT will report their two-year and four-year target to FHWA in the state initial GHG report by no later than February 1, 2024. The 2024 media performance period progress report due October 1, 2024. Biannual reporting related to the GHG measure will begin with the 2026 full performance period progress report and the 2026 baseline performance report. We are currently communicating with the NGADOT divisions internally on GHG measure. And starting next month, we will also be coordinating with MPOs and other stakeholders. So this is where we are at this time for GHG. Ness and uh, thank you for your participation. <laughs> so, uh, can I add one more thing? Sure, so, go ahead. Uh, right. So, once we set these targets, you know, in February, uh, MPOs are required to set their targets within six months or uh, coordinate with our, you know, agree with our state DOT targets. In past, what we have done, we for system performance, we had done, set the targets collaboratively with all the MPOs and other stakeholders. So one target, they all agreed because we all were on board with the same target. So it was easy for everyone to just follow the same targets for the uh, state as well as MPOs. So the, we are anticipating same thing here. And in January, we will be able to set the numbers and you know, collaboratively, we're going to get this done. Thank okay. you. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you very much, Simon and Sudhir. Glad that you were oh, able to you. make it. <laughs> okay, and uh, last but not least, we have Vandana Mathur and Ake Pomsavath from our mobility and operations team. Thank you so much, Amanda. And uh, I have my team uh, who will be presenting, Tom Murphy. So, Tom, you can go ahead. Uh, Vanda, I think is our that feature presentation is next. Uh, oh, yeah, this okay. is just for the updates. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, Vanda, if you like, I, I can provide a, an update for our team. Definitely. Good. Good morning. Uh, this is with Federal Highway, and I will provide an update for our team. The scope of uh, Next Gen Tim is using technology to save lives, continue to protect the safety of emergency responder, working on the main line and, and shoulders of the roadway, continue to help reduce traffic fatality. Next slide, please.
there has been an abundance of commercial trucks in the left lane causing congestion. The NGDOT has continued to collaborate with DriveWise to provide a no trucks in left lane alerts to improve mobility. The digital alerts are sent to the in-cap logging device for the truck drivers. It is geocoded and programmed every 15 miles on a three lane roadway. Next slide. Since August, about 1.8 million total alerts have been sent and with about 500,000 alerts being sent to the commercial trucks in cab device. <laughs> We are currently in the assessment stage, reviewing the performance data. Uh, next slide, please. Here are the example performance data and more information detail on the project will be provided today's feature presentation by Tom and Luis. And with this performance data, it is that the first foray and attempt to uh, learn how the digital alerts performance data can potentially influence a change in driving behavior. And this concludes our update for the CIA mobility and ops team. Great, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Alrighty, so thank you all to our CIA teams for those updates, and we're going to move right into our feature presentation on two of NJDOT's pilot program. Uh, as a reminder, you can put any questions in the chat and we'll monitor it uh, along as we go. Uh, so right now, I'll take it away, Tom and Louise. Absolutely, thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, I'm thrilled to be able to present this here at our fourth quarter stick meeting. Um, when Bondana told me that we had the chance to be our feature presentation and I would have a captive audience to talk about Weather Savvy too, uh, I jumped at it because I've been working at this since I joined the DOT in April of last year, or sorry, April of 2021, time flies. Um, <laughs> so uh, some of you may know about our Weather Savvy uh, pi uh, pilot project. Um, you know, we are very proud of it and take every opportunity we can to uh, talk to anyone we can about it. Um, and it is one of those uh, projects that we have done in um, collaboration with NJIT. Uh, they are our uh, ITS Resource Center. And so I do want to just give a thanks to uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dan Bashinsky as well as Dr. Uh, Branislav Dmitrievich. Uh, they've put a lot of time and work into this with us th uh, throughout the past couple of years to make this uh, project the success that it is. Uh, next slide, please. And so, as I mentioned, we like to talk about this whenever we can, and part of it being uh, at ITS New Jersey in uh, 2021, we did win the uh, an outstanding award uh, for this project. Uh, next slide, please. Now, here in New Jersey, Everyone knows we have extreme weather. Everyone has a storm story, whether it be one that they worked, they got stuck in, or they just sat by the fire and enjoyed it come down around them. Um, but we all have that story, whether it be a hurricane, a uh, nor'easter, a, a bomb cyclone, uh, everything that comes that can hit New Jersey basically does outside of sandstorms. Uh, but we came pretty close this past year with all that uh, yellow fog coming uh, from up north. So we do see just about everything. Um, and our roads cover a majority of this, a lot of the state, you know, around 2,300 miles of roadway. Uh, we have 460 fixed cameras, 52 road weather information uh, system stations, also known as RWIS stations, and 1,400 vehicles in the NJDOT fleet. Now, this gives us a good eye of what happens in our, what goes on in our roads, but it doesn't give us complete picture. And frankly, it's not uh, fiscally conceivable to cover every inch of our road in cameras and RWIS stations. There's just going to be some gaps. And we were trying to figure out how it is that we can deploy the current, some of our current resources that we have in order to get better real-time information about what's happening on our roadway system. One of the biggest assets we have at the DOT is our roughly 1,400 vehicles. Now, so the thought was, what, how, what if we used these vehicles as uh, roaming RWIS stations, or, or as we call them, a MARWIS or a mobile RWIS station? 
Um, it's a way to fill in some of those gaps of those RWIS stations, of those cameras, because as great as they are, sometimes the RWIS station isn't working. It may be giving faulty readings. It may not be giving any readings. Um, the cameras are great, but they're fixed. Um, you know, they can pan, zoom, tilt, but still there are blind spots. So how can we fill that in? Um, so what we did is in uh, 2017, uh, we launched an initiative to deploy the integrated mobile observations for the road, uh, road weather and traffic management. And we applied for and received New Jersey's first accelerated innovation deployment uh, demonstration program grant from the US DOC, the DOS, DOT, a part of a uh, EDC4, uh, the weather savvy uh, roads program and uh, this pilot uh, launched in 2019 right before the pandemic uh, and included the acquisition installation testing deployment and evaluation of, of an IMO system that would provide remote video streaming road weather uh, sensing capabilities from the NJDOT fleet vehicles to a web-based data management and visual visualization portal so yes we wanted to get better information of what's happening on our roads but it also wasn't just hey let's just get weather sensors out there it's again how can we see it how can we get eyes on what's happening? But also we get additional information as we go as well. Um, one of the part of the program to make sure, uh, you know, the trucks were sending the signals as needed be. We were testing our, we were testing the signal strength throughout our, our highways as well. Um, all the way up to Sussex, all the way down to Cape May to make sure that when these vehicles go where they, where they need to go, they're able to send the data back to, uh, back to the servers. So that was another one of the benefits of this program. Uh, next, please. So this is a uh, an overview of the setup of the system. Um, so on the picture on the right, you see some of the main components of it. We have our Sierra wireless uh, router, it, the MP70. There is the Visala MD30 road weather sensor, the Panasonic uh, um, a, a rugged tablet. It's the tough pad. It's actually uh, uh, blast proof. Uh, same thing they use for the military and for the police. Um, in addition, we have the antenna, cameras, and a uh, power over the internet uh, injector for the power to the camera uh, for one, one of the types of cameras that we initially started using. Now, the program runs on AT&T uh, FirstNet. This is a 4G network that is restricted for first responders, and it is a priority network. So if the, net, if the networks do go down or is there is heavy traffic on the networks and there, if there is a, uh, a natural disaster, a big event, um, at, we would have priority over those airwaves. And so that was critical to us because when the system, when we really need it, is when those air, is when the uh, bandwidth is gonna be uh, kind of at, at its max or at its uh, most restricted. So we wanted to make sure that this would work at all times. Next slide, please. So this is the road weather sensor made by Visala. Uh, there are several things that this weather that this senses. Uh, first, there is the uh, the laser-based surface state uh, sensor, and this so this uses three lasers that shoot down to the road, and it reflects back and it lets uh, lets you know the state of the road, whether it is dry, whether it is wet, whether it's um, frozen, etc. It also lets you know the thickness of the precipitation on the road. So if it's, is it just like an inch of snow? Is it several inches? Is it just a dusting? Uh, this sensor lets us know. In addition, there is the infrared uh, surface temperature sensor, as well as the ambient air temperature sensor. So the the lasers and the infrared road sensor are part of this part right here. This goes shoots right down onto the road. And behind it, there is the ambient air sensor. Now the ambient air sensor is initially attached to the uh, to this, to the main sensor, but we actually moved it uh, to the back of the vehicle, so that way it's not a it gets a better reading. Uh, with the air temperature sensor being right right there at the front of the truck, it could get basically taken heat from the engine. It could take in all, a bunch of misreadings. So we we tried to get it away from there, so it it wouldn't that wouldn't be an issue. Um, one of the so this is set up on a plow. It is also set up on operations uh, pickup trucks, as well as SSP vehicles and IMER trucks as well. And there are different setups, slightly different setups for it. And I believe I do have pictures for that uh, here on this as well. Next slide, please. So this is the setup of it inside. Here is our tablet and our, and our uh, keyboard as well. And here is the display that the, that the drivers can see. Um, now, one of the updates that we have done is we've made the screen so it can be uh, the background is black instead of white, so it's easier on the driver's eyes at night. Um, one of the best part, one, one of the great things about this as well is this allowed us to be able to get 
tablets into the laptops or tablets into the trucks for some of our drivers, like our SSP drivers, our ops supervisors. So that way, you know, they can do their timesheets, they can do their email, they can do, respond to necessary emails without having to go back to the office. It was a great, um, I guess, side effect of, of, the, of this. Um, and it's one of those that we're looking to see how we can continue to expand this because all the drivers who use it, love it. Next, please. So this is our current setup of uh, the Weather Savvy Pilot. There are currently 24 trucks in operation, seven plows, nine supervisor pickups, six SSP trucks, and two IMERTs. And they have been strategically placed um, and set up throughout, throughout the state to hit all the major roads that we need to. Um, the roads that we do cover for this are I-80, uh, I-287, I-295, I-78, I-280, as well as NJ-10, uh, 23, and 42 and U.S. routes 46, 40, and 202. So we try to cover all of the major uh, roads here that the DOT uh, operates here in the state. And so that includes our incline packages up north, uh, north, south, and central operations, as well as uh, mobility north and south for SSP. Next, please. So part of the system is the sensors that are physically on the trucks. The other part of it is what we get from those sensors and how it, how it helps us uh, in operations. So what we're looking at here is the weather savvy uh, web interface. Uh, it's the GUI. So what to kind of break this down on the left is all of our list of vehicles, but whether it be uh, mobility, so it's our IMERTs and SSP or operations um, for North, Central and South. Green means that it is active. Red means it is currently inactive. Part of what this does as well, uh, the, with the GPS in the router, uh, we are able to um, track the vehicles and we you can see the different uh, colors here in the breadcrumbs for the truck that this that um, shows the different road states that it's going over. Orange may be mixed, blue may be ice, um, but it gives that I or sorry, orange is slushy, uh, blue is ice, and it kind of keeps it keeps the track of that of where that vehicle has gone. Um, in addition, it on the right, we also have all the readings from the from the sensors, both the road temperature, the air temperature, the dew point, frost point, road condition, as well as the grip. And the grip is very important to us because it helps make some of those decisions when it comes to treating the roads. Um, so it gives us that idea again of what is happening right there, what are drivers really experiencing, rather than what we can just see from the cameras. Uh, in addition, it also shows us the level of the per precipitation on the roads, as well as the humidity there as well. And so this is actually a shot from one of the winter storms that happened in January of 2022, uh, one of those uh, nor'easters that kind of rolled in on us. And this is one, one of these projects that, again, we, we love to show off, but again, people love to see it as well. There are over, uh, I believe it's 150 people who have access to um, this GUI, and you better believe about 150 of them are logged in once the storms come, whether it be from their personal device at home, whether it be from their work computer here, or maybe potentially their mobile Android uh, device as well. All three of those um, are, are able to log into this uh, site and everyone views this, whether it be the, um, whether it's Sal here, our senior director, whether it's assistant commissioners, the commissioner. I know that the government, the governor has come into to Stimsy and seen our, and, and seen this up on our wall as well. So. It's one of those projects that we know gets a lot of face time, so we want to make sure it's it's working the best it can always. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the screen that we that we really love to show off as well. This is the video wall, so it allows you to bring up uh, the video from multiple trucks there all at once, so you can really see what's going on. And as I see here, I see some people log in from multiple devices at the same time, which is even better. <laughs> um, but the video wall there allows you to see. Um, uh, up, up to six different uh, cameras there at one time. It allows you to configure which ones you want to do. Um, and it could be because very well there's one truck on one side of Newark that's seen one thing and one on one right on the other. And it's seen something completely different. So you know, one one place never. One reading never says this is what it is everywhere. We, we want to know as much as we can. Next slide, please. So this is kind of a again the routes of the trucks and kind of the miles that have been driven over the first uh, first two years of the pilot uh, you'll notice the SSP trucks get a uh, rack of a lot of mileage um, and some of the plows a little bit less so and because we know sometimes during the summer during the spring months they're out there they may be running bump for landscaping 
but they're not out they're not out plowing they're not out doing a lot of major work so they tend to be sitting in, sitting in the yard sometimes um but then we to augment that we have the our imerts and our ops trucks at, as well as the ssp that are constantly roaming next slide please so because the project has been the success that it is we have decided that we are going to expand this even further um, and part of it being we hear from supervisors we hear from um, other, other people go why, why can't I have this in my truck why can't I have this in my guys trucks I, I would love to I'd love to be able to see I mean and it just makes sense for us as we continue to go to continue to expand this uh, so we started with 24 vehicles and we are going to be adding 20 more um, so in the north, we actually are outfitting that one northern Imer today, and that will be ready for uh, the road tomorrow by, by the afternoon. So we'll be up to 25 vehicles. And uh, in, the S and in the south, we'll be doing two additional SSP for mobility as well. Uh, for operations, we are focusing more on plows going forward than we are the, op than we are the operations supervisors. And the reasoning behind that is when this when the storms come in, the plows are going to be out there 24 seven. They're going to be constantly running when someone's shift is up. Someone's getting back in that plow and they're driving it and they're going to continue roaming as well. Um, our, op our operations supervisors put in long hours. They work very hard. And so when their shift is up, it's time for them to go home. And it's it's great having it on their truck. And we get that view when when they're on. But when they're off, we lose that. And it and it's just one less set of eyes out there on the road. So the more plows we can get out there, the more eyes we can get when it comes to when we really need it on those storms for a longer duration. Um, part of the and also increasing the coverage means increased precision accuracy uh, of some of the information that we have, so we can just so we can make better decisions, and that's really what, what a lot of this comes down to: making the best decision for our our road users here in New Jersey. Next slide, please. So, when I say one of the reasons we, we do this for our road user, but really for everyone here in the state. New Jersey's the garden state. Um, I know everyone here is very proud to be from New Jersey or live in New Jersey, and I know I certainly am. Um, you know, when I lived out of state. I made sure everyone knew that, hey, we are the garden state. We are much prettier than you think we are. Uh, we are a gorgeous state and we have some of the best produce around. But there are things that unfortunately that, that can be a hindrance to our crops and part of that can be over treatment of roads, Part of it can, and that can affect the uh, the groundwater, and it can affect our, our amazing Jersey tomatoes, our sweet corn, and our blueberries and cranberries—the things that everyone knows us for. What really, what they really know us for. <laughs> uh, so it's how. So in addition to, you know, better serving our road users, being able to make better decisions to serve everyone, it's also those who eat, may not be on the roads but are adjacent to the roads, uh, like like our farmers. Next slide, please. And so as we've talked about the outcomes, um, you know, what, like I said, part of it's everyone's everyone wishes they had this in, in their vehicle. Um, but in addition, you know, to the all the rave reviews we've gotten from everyone, there's also lessons we've learned along the way as well. Um, initially, when we started this, we had what we call a bullet camera. Um, so that is kind of a, a longer camera that points out and this kind of falls down every now and again. So you need to tighten the screw. but. What we've done is we've moved on from that. We've gone to a dome camera. It stays fixed. There's no adjustment that needs to be done. It's it's there and it requires one less piece of equipment in the truck as well because it doesn't need something to basically decode the video. Um, we've uh, learned through some of the installations as well that, hey, maybe this uh, USB cord in the back could be installed maybe a little bit differently or a little bit tighter to give us a little bit more leeway so things aren't coming disconnected. Um, we've uh, had instances um, in the very beginning where we learned uh, that the laptop needed to be locked in, it needed to be locked in there. Um, so th there have been plenty of things we've learned along the way and we're, we continue to learn as we go. Um, now this being a into its things started being installed 2019. We're now in its its fourth year. Some some of the equipment has uh, seen some wear and tear. That's it's in these trucks for a lot of miles, a lot of days uh, in a lot of different conditions. So we're going going along and uh, replacing what needs to be replaced, part of that being routers and sensors. And we've had great partners um, at Visala and uh, Sierra Wireless uh, th along the way, uh, making these warranty swaps, uh, helping us test for uh, defects and making sure that they're put, that uh, we're putting the best product out there. Um, in addition, te technology keeps changing. Uh, so with each new Windows update that comes out, there may need to be updates to our to the Python app that runs in the background. Um, 
with some of the driver updates that could affect some of the settings that that we run to get to make some of the code work. Um, so it's uh, it's a lot of checking up on these uh, these trucks as we go, bringing them in every month or two for maintenance, having them stay, having the trucks um, stay on for an extra hour so we can run some of the updates um, as as we need to to try to keep everything uh, tip top as we now go into what we are what we are told is going to be a very messy winter. Um, so let's see. Um, in addition, well, we've there's a lot of institutional knowledge that we've gen that we've gathered through uh, all the all the work here for the past four years that we need to uh, that we have started making standard troubleshooting guides, standard maintenance guides, standard things. So, you know, when I show up or Branislav or uh, Dr. Bash Dr. Bashensky show up at a yard, we 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 know what we're doing, but you know we've been doing this and we need to make sure that's documented for everyone who comes next and they have a checklist that says, okay, if the, if not getting internet here's what we here's the steps we go through if we're not getting the right this temperature this is the steps we go through um and you know it's, a, it's been a, it's been a lot of hours in netcong and cherry hill and uh fernwood to learn some of this and it's been important for us to get this documented so that way as this continues to grow it's not just us and uh it's just not just us and the uh the doctors up at njit doing this but we have so, we have someone institutionally who can do this as well um and that's something that we, we've learned as as kind of we've gone. Um, one of the great things that is coming as well is there's going to be someone at NJIT who is specifically um, uh, in charge, uh, who has a major responsibility with this, who will be out there for for repair. So it's not so it's not us going out going out there to tinker with this, but someone whose specific job is weather savvy maintenance, and they'll be able to go out there and get this done the next day after a storm. Um, so it's great that we're able to continue to keep this going. Um, this expansion is going to take place over the course of several months. As I said, the first one is being outfitted today. And I guess one of the other le lessons we've learned is we need a, a few additional installers or outfitters for this as well. Um, because it, currently we've used EAI down in Cherry Hill. Uh, EAI primarily outfit uh, police vehicles, but they have been, with, been our partners for this for the very beginning. And they have been great getting us in when they can, but they are they are, they are very busy as well. Um, so we've been able to find one or two other installers so we can get one to two vehicles done per week, starting this week kind of through the end of the winter and uh, kind of keep growing this as uh, as as needed. And uh, hopefully this goes much, much further beyond the 44 vehicles and hopefully in a year or two, I'm talking to you about uh, triple digits in vehicles and not not just uh, 40s. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, it was a very timely presentation, you know, as we head further into our our winter um, season. I know you've already had a couple of um, events already where you're mobilizing. <clears throat> Um, and I also know a couple of weather nerds that would love, you know, to get access to this, um, the mobile app. And uh, I see in the chat that Chris said he, he logs on multiple devices um, at one time. And um, Sal's complimenting you and saying that we do cool stuff. Um, absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm really glad to hear that a pilot is now becoming standard practice here at DOT. And it's, it's definitely, I can see the value um, of your work and this pilot program and hopefully maybe one day in the future, um, you know, regular cars and, and vehicles will be at, um, outfitted with with sensors like this um, to improve safety of roads. Um, so that'd be great. So um, thank you so much, Tom. Absolutely. Does anybody have and any questions? I mean, I just want to clarify this. This is staying as a pilot for now. This is, this okay. is still currently housed at NJIT. It is on it is on their servers that is there. Um, as of right now, there is no um, we are, we are not moving it uh, un, under DOT's ownership yet. Um, so it is still housed at NJIT. So even though we are expanding, it is still staying at the moment as a pilot. Okay, I'm sensing some potential though, but <laughs> that's not for me to decide. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Louise, you're up. Thank you, Amanda. And I just want to uh, put out there, you know, Tom has worked very hard and long hours in order to help you know, and contributed a lot within the Weather Savvy Pilot Program. So thank you, Tom. 
definitely deserves that recognition. Um, well, good morning, everyone. As previously mentioned, my name is Luis Rivera. I'm going to be going over our trucking parking pilot and the expansion that has happened within the last month or two. Next slide, please. Now, first, I wanted to give you a quick back. So let's talk about the problem. So access to truck parking is important. Truck drivers consistently rank truck parking as a top concern. The American Trucking Associations and Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association wrote a letter to USDOT earlier this year citing that 98% of truck drivers report problems finding safe parking. So many states have engaged in truck parking expansion efforts, such as Iowa, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. These states launched a truck parking information management system, or what is otherwise known as TPIMS, to help truck drivers more easily locate available commercial vehicle parking spaces as both state-run rest areas and select private truck stops around the Midwest. Arizona, the Arizona DOT has invested 5.2 million to nearly double available commercial vehicle parking spaces. And the Colorado Department of Transportation has collaborated with the town of Bennett and uh, national truck stop chains chain uh, loves travel stops to break ground on a project that will add 114 new full use truck parking spots along the Colorado front range. So knowing this, you know, there's a lot of necessary expansion that needs to happen. Now, we know it's a problem and concern. Now I want to narrow it down to specifically New, New Jersey. According to Jason's log truck parking survey results and comparative analysis by FHWA, they state that most states are reporting a concern of not enough truck parking spaces. New Jersey, New Jersey currently has about 2,915 um, truck parking spaces and 52% of OOIDA members, by OOIDA, I mean the Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association. So 52% of those members within the state of New Jersey reported parking shortages, reported that there is a concern and an, an issue with parking shortages. And um, something else I wanted to state is a recent study of truck parking around New Works Industrial Zone. Um, so it was found that 2,136 trucks were parked curbside and 91 were double parked throughout the duration of the study. And another report indicates a troublesome situation on I-287 in Malwa, New Jersey, where trucks are frequently found parked illegally in the shoulder along a section of road with steep inclines and lane drop from three lanes to two. To two. So with this in mind, uh, let's, move, let's move forward to our project. Next slide, please. So as part of our efforts to bring truck parking awareness within our state, uh, we've partnered with NJT and have developed a real-time truck parking information system pilot in New Jersey. So this pilot is meant to collect and disseminate truck parking availability to the trucking community, specifically truck drivers. The concept of operations and high-level systems requirement specifications for the pilot deployment were developed in 2020. The CONOPS document describes the functional and technical requirements of the TPIS, real-time truck parking information system required for a pilot deployment of the TPIS at one of the truck parking facilities in the NGDOT jurisdiction. Um, as you can see as well from the image on the right, you can see where, we, where our truck pilot uh, locations are. Uh, we previously started with, or we started with uh, Hardy, the Hardy rest area, and now we've expanded it to include uh, Carney's Point. Next slide, please. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the technologies that are deployed within the rest areas. So for Harding, we've deployed two traffic microwave sensors, nine CCTV cameras, and 44 in-pavement sensors that we like to refer to as pucks. Now the two uh, microwave uh, traffic microwave sensors are non-intrusive vehicle detection sensors that use radar technologies. They can be mounted on a roadside infrastructure, such as a traffic light pole, street light pole, or overhead grant, grant, uh, gantry. Um, and it captures things such as volume, speed, occupancy, and the, class and the classification of each detected vehicle in real, in real time. Uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, another name for Carney's point is, is deep water. Uh, but yes, I'm going to talk more about this in deep water and the truck 
and the yeah. uh, expanding our pilot because this is what we've currently most recently worked on and how we've expanded our our truck parking pilot. So this specific location, we have two traffic microwave sensors, one CCTV, and 68 in pavement sensor sensors. And on the right, we can see an image of uh, the location of where things are set up. Um, and you can see across the parking spaces, we have two pucks in order for it to measure uh, when a truck is, is uh, over that parking spot. Uh, next slide, please. Now here, you can see the steps for installing the micro radar sensor, beginning with first, and, and these are what we refer to as pucks, uh, beginning with first measuring the position of a sensor hole, and then from there, pouring a hole, and then they clean, they clean and dry the hole, place the sensor in there, and fill the hole with epoxy. Next slide, please. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about our truck parking web portal, where all this information can be found and where um, um, it is stored. So our web, web portal has been developed for two specific reasons. One, for real-time situational awareness of our rest areas, the occupancy of these parking spaces, and so forth. And also, it provides real-time detection reporting and analytics from all of our ITS devices. Next slide, please. So here we can see the home page once you log in and uh, what information is displayed, right? So we can see the number of trucks and other vehicles that are entering and uh, exiting the parking. And you could as well see the lot utilization and average dwell time of vehicles. And here as well, you can see, uh, the, it shows you the layout, right? Uh, from, a, how do you call it, from a top point of view, you know, the parking spaces and and you can see from there which ones have been occupied and which ones haven't. Next slide, please. Now, for each parking spot, um, the information we have available available is uh, when the parking spot was occupied, for how long, historically how much the spot is being used, and the maximum time a spot has been occupied. And we as well have access to our video cameras that uh, I'll get into in a bit. I believe there's a um, and then it's showing uh, our cameras and now you can see the live feed. Next slide, please. So here is more uh, details and analytics that can be found within the dashboard. If you go over uh, to the overview portion of it, uh, you're able to tell information again, pertaining to parking spot utilization and you're able to filter based off of the year, the season and uh, the specific month as well. Um, so if you look at the bottom two, visualizations, it keeps, they keep, they show us the count of the truck count by the day of the week or, or um, by the month and the occupancy uh, by day of the week or month. And next slide, please. Now here there's more uh, details. And what I really like about this um, um, tab is that you're able to filter in a specific time a specific day and time, a start and end time, uh, to detect uh, what historically the utilization of these parking spaces has been like, right? And so we're able to see that here, right? We have a, I believe this is a start of 2022, June 10th from 5 a.m. Uh, that's the start date. And the end is going to be 2022, June 13th, 9 p.m. Uh, so once you click search, it, it applies that filtering and it'll bring up the visualizations, right? And so in this uh, top of the visualization, we can see that the occupied spaces and the average occupancy all divided by these different brackets of time. And then below that, we're able to see the vehicle truck numbers, and we're able to see the vehicles that have entered versus the trucks that have entered the parking space. And then in the visualization on the right, we can see the vehicles exited versus the trucks that have exited the parking space. So this is really neat and handy um, and is very, very, uh, very helpful. Next slide, please. Now here we can see the uh, uh, video wall, similar to the one like we have in Weather Savvy, um, except this is, is stationary, right, static. And we're able to see the vehicles that are entering, entering in, entering out, and um, the vehicles and trucks that are within the parking space. And this helps us in order to make sure that or, or validate whatever our our pucks, our sensors are telling us. You know, if they're saying that 
there's 10 parking spaces that are occupied um, and it shows us in in our in, in the um, um, image overview that 10 of those parking spaces have been filled. We can we can come here and verify that the information that it's giving us is actually accurate. Next slide, please. So that concludes uh, the truck parking pilot. Um, and now I want to pass over the time to our colleague, Kim, who's going to walk you through the no trucks and left lane notifications and the outreach tracker. Kim, the time is yours. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kimberly Ferguson, and I work with Thomas, Luis, and Vandana. And I want to talk to you about no trucks in the left lane notifications. Okay, this was developed, the no truck and the left lane notifications for our truckers through DriveWise. They access this notification through an app that is on their phone, in addition to their ELD devices, which is an electronic logging device that's required by DOT. Uh, notifications strategically replace roughly every 15 miles in every three plus lane sections of the roadways. And how we determine how often they get these notifications and how many, the distance of the notifications, the team actually went out and we did a little experiment ourselves and we drove the roadway and we kind of looked at it as if we were the drivers. So we wanted to know that we didn't want to overwhelm them with too many notifications and, you know, different other different things that they have to pay attention to. But yet we wanted them to get this information as often as needed. And again, it, it comes every 15 miles in only the three plus lane sections and roadways that receive these notifications are I-80, I-95, 280, 287, 295 and New Jersey 440 Turnpike Parkway and AC Expressways. The purpose for these notifications is to alleviate traffic congestion and increase the traffic flow and safety for truckers and everyday drivers. Uh, as we know, um, commercial vehicles are very, very large, and the space that is needed for them to switch back and forth from lanes is a large space, and it takes a little bit of time. And also, they have tremendous problems with blind spots because of the size of the trucks. We do know that they have uh, mirrors, you know, on on commercial vehicles, there's a number of mirrors that are on their drawer, doors and in the front of the cab. But a lot of people don't realize that if you're approaching a commercial truck from behind or from the left or the right, if you cannot see that driver in his rearview mirror, he cannot see you. So um, you have to be very careful. They have to be very careful. Like I said, they have a lot of blind spots. And this makes it, uh, we know also that the far left lane and the three plus lane uh, highways is usually the faster lane and used for um, passing. And we want to make it so, uh, we want to um, make it safer for everyone where they're not just switching lanes back and forth. Like I said, it takes their large vehicle and it takes a great amount of uh, effort to switch lanes back and forth. Well, and it kind of keeps them in a, uh, uh, basics, uh, which helps with probably with the speed because we're not passing all the time and they're not moving back and forth in between three lanes. Okay, next slide, please. Here we're showing the no trucks in the left lane notification over a three month period. And if you notice if the, the left uh, on the left of the screen, the alerts that were sent out by the no trucks in the left lane through drive wise was 395,018. And the number of trucks that we shown on the highway were 18,502 in New Jersey. And at three months later, the total number of alerts went to 1,816,327 and the total number of trucks became 500,538. This is a very significant because we know that these alerts are going out and that trucks, the commercial trucks increase over, as time goes by. So this is very important that they get these notifications and um, as Egg had uh, mentioned earlier, these are this performance data is very helpful for us so we can know um, we can keep track like the number of uh, trucks as well as the alerts. Um, next slide, please. 
we're going to talk a little bit now about the Tim Outreach Tracker. Okay, next slide. Traffic Incident Managed Outreach Tracker. That's uh, what we're talking about. We have it, which it it goes hand in hand with Tim, which is traffic incident management training uh, that the goal for us was that we would get 5,000 first responders trained in 2023. We've actually haven't hit that goal, but we're up to 62 percent. We were at 32,000 and we're trying through this uh, their outreach to uh, get more people trained. Um, I guess we have we have a short time at the end of the year, but we will be getting we're working very hard on getting more people trained. Um, there's weekly and biannual meetings that you know help uh, that we support for the outreach that are spearheaded by Bob Hamakala, Liz Falcon, and Todd Evans, who do a great job of trying to find uh, places and um, who and where and the locations of places where we can give people um, the information that they need to uh, get Tim training. Um, the outreach tracker provides management for Tim outreach efforts. We're just, we're, you know, during an incident, it's very important that people know how uh, they should uh, slow down and move over and how the first responders also learn how to protect themselves and other uh, drivers from secondary accidents. The, the tracker, though, records names and individuals and who they outreached and contacted with and the municipality and different things that they do. Can we have the next slide, please? Here is a, an example of the outreach tracker, which shows the name of the person that was um, reached, reached out to, their date and their location. And it shows, you know, where they're from and um, different notes if they were, um, I want to say, followed if there was a follow up with them. Um, these, this is very important because, like I said, we have a goal 5,000 first responders to, to train and we're still, you know, working hard towards that goal. And like I said, uh, we're promoting the Tim training through and we want people to learn as much as they can about traffic incident management. The tracker is, you know, unified and it's, it gives us faster updates and it's success. It, it helps us to uh, figure out necessary improvements that we may need, you know, as far as uh, tracking and following up with people who would need this very important training. Okay, next slide. That's all I have. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to ask. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Louise and Tom and Kim. I apologize for not recognizing you as uh, one of our guest speakers. So oh, thank you fine. so much for that. Um, does anyone have any uh, questions for Kim or Louise? Okay, um, there was a question in the chat about what happens if a, a truck driver decides to drive in the left lane anyway, and Vandana responded that they'll get a notification after 15 minutes to move over to the right. Um, and uh, we got another comment saying it's a great idea. So thank you so much for those presentations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. And I would like to thank my teammates. They have been wonderful. This is the first time Kimberly presented uh, in the stake meeting, and I'm very proud of her. And of course, Tom great is a great resource on weather savvy. And thank you so much, Louis, for such a detailed presentation. And thank you, Amanda, for giving us this opportunity to present the programs, the pilot programs. Our unit is continuously working. Operations is working hard to find different ways to make the lives of New Jersey residents easy and we are all the time working on cool projects and figuring it out how we can make life better. So thank you everyone for giving us this chance to present our uh, pilot programs. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. OK, so next on our agenda, we're going to be doing a um, a survey. So before we wrap up with our announcements and reminders, we're going to do this interactive Mentimeter exercise. Um, so if you Amanda, don't mind, so uh, Amanda, go ahead, Gary. Sure. Yeah, Eric raised his hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Gary. Go ahead, Eric. So ironically, I need to leave for a meeting to discuss truck parking. So if you've ever wondered how timely and necessary uh, some of the work you do is, wonder no more. 
I must say um, I'm a little humbled at the, uh, the just the passion and the presentations and the dedication from all the people here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really jazzed about this group more so than, <laughs> than I was before. It was always something that Mike did in this conference room around the, the, the hall. And now that it's now that I guess it's my conference yeah. room, I'm really I'm looking forward to, to getting in and, and 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 doing a lot more. I mean, just even trying to get groups like Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration involved in this and some other opportunities. This was this was exciting. And you're you're a great group. And uh, maybe we'll be employing some of your technologies in the not too distant future. So, so thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank Eric. you. Eric. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Gary, for keeping an eye out for me. I have a lot of windows going on. <laughs> okay, um, so if you can please use your phones to open up an internet browser of your choice and go to menti.com and type in the code that you see there. Um, and I'm going to finagle my screens and start sharing uh, the survey. So I'm going to do that. Here another screen. I can find it. Where's the code? The code is one seven two three eight one nine five. And I'm hoping that you are all now seeing a yellow screen. I'm sharing my presentation. OK, so once you are there, if you wouldn't mind, there's a, a little heart at the bottom. Uh, click that and kind of let me know that you're here and you're participating and uh, everyone can kind of see all these hearts flowing. So everyone is showing up. And again, the code uh, is at the top of the screen there. 1723-8195. And if uh, Geary, would you mind just putting that code into the chat just in case? We need it or someone else needs it. It's been a yeah, while sure. since I've done one of these uh, mentee things, so I'm hoping I do it correctly. All right, so we've got a good number of people. Amazing presentations today, some feedback. Thank you. I agree. All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So you should all be seeing another slide on your devices and also seeing um, the results populate in real time on your screens here. So pick your next dream vacation. This is kind of a warm up question so everybody gets the hang of the Mentimeter app. There's a lot of beach lovers. Especially in the winter time. I walked into the building behind a, a lady yesterday and she was complaining the entire way in and how, how she hates the winter. She hates the cold and she's, you know, shivering and bundling up and I'm walking in without a coat. You know, I don't know what it is. I don't mind the winter. I think it's great that my husband does all the shoveling. I think that's probably why I don't mind it so much. <laughs> if I had to do more of the work, I'd probably be complaining. OK, so we've got uh, the winner here is beach trip for sure. And we've got a lot of road trips. OK, great. Nice warm up. All right, so the purpose real quick of this um, survey is to gauge how you're doing in your initiatives um, that you're working on for EDC 7. Um, I know a lot of the report outs today really touched upon how you're doing and we're at the halfway point for EDC 7 headed into 2024. So if you can kind of recall the goals that you set at the beginning of the EDC round, we want to know how you're doing so far and you know what challenges or problems that you faced and if there's anything that we can do as the stick executive team to assist you in that. 
Um, and also we're going to be asking a couple questions about, you know, identifying new uh, ideas and things like that. So as you can see, most of us are from NJDOT, but also, as you know, New Jersey Stick is certainly not an NJDOT only council. Um, we really want to hear from our feds, our MPOs, academia, um, consulting firms, you know, municipalities and counties, and even our um, private industry and trade groups. So um, thank you so much for your participation. So we've got about 45 people actively participating. Thank you so much. Move on. Um, so, like I said, we want to help you. Um, we want to hear your progress, challenges. Um, so, for the following questions, just select the innovation topics that you personally are most knowledgeable about. If you're a CIA team lead, if you're in, on the implementation team, um, if you're not familiar with it, you know, there's no pressure to, you know, select something. All right, I'm going to move on to this next slide and this slide is just basically a reminder for everyone of what initiatives we're working on and the baseline stage that we set back in April um, or back I'm sorry in January of last year and the two-year implementation goals that we set so we'd really like to know um, how everyone is doing so for integrating greenhouse gas um, we were at the demonstration stage for enhancing performance with internally cured concrete. We were also at demo for nighttime visibility. We're pretty much already institutionalized, which is great. Um, strategic workforce development at the demo stage. Next generation TIM technology institutionalized, wonderful. Um, and also for environmental product declarations for sustainable project delivery, we're at the development stage. Okay, bridge debt cracking. Okay, uh, so this next slide, uh, we want to ask what is the implementation status for each EDC 7 initiative that you are knowledgeable about or affiliated with currently? And once you make your selection, it'll populate on the screen. So towards the left of the scale, we have no progress towards the goal. Um, and then towards the right of the scale, we have completion of the goal. So this is going to be a, a good way for us to kind of visualize how we're doing so far. And, uh, you know, even though the EDC 7 and all the previous rounds are two years in duration, that doesn't mean that we only work on the initiatives, excuse me, for those two years. Obviously, um, after the two years, we can continue moving towards those goals. So it seems like everyone, um, all the initiatives are approaching, uh, you know, a halfway point towards um, completing the goal. So hopefully we can identify any, you know, help that we can give you to um, help you get to those stages that you, you set out at the beginning. So thank you very much. Okay, let's see. I'm getting kind of a wait signal on my end. OK, so this is one of those open ended um, questions. Please describe any challenges that you are experiencing in reaching the implementation goal. So if you don't mind, um, please identify the EDC 7 topic in your answer. And as you type the um, answers in, they'll populate up on the screen. 
and it says here, um, short answers are recommended and you have 200 characters. I'm just going to type in test and see what happens on my phone. OK, so it doesn't seem like anything's populating. I just sent a test and nothing is coming up. I'm wondering if it's just. Hey, Amanda, do you want to see if you can just um, retoggle that? Um, arrow is it is that on the bottom left? Yeah, go back and then forward again. Yeah, try it. Yeah, again. I can do that. And if it's not, I think. Try the next slide then. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go to this line. I'm going to I'm going to type in a test. And see if that does anything. It looks like it's thinking. It does. You could try reloading the. If you can go back out and reload it, I think you can go directly back. OK, so if I click this X in the upper left hand corner, I think so. You could try going back in again. You'd have to reload the and pick it up again, but I don't All know right. what else to say. I mean, you could try. Yeah, OK, yeah. let's let's I don't know. Let me let me do a little refresh here. On this back end here. And see if that helps. Um, yeah. All right, here's a look. All my tests are showing up now. <laughs> OK. Um, let me go back scroll to present. Yeah, you can scroll down the, the slide that you need. It wasn't that one, was it? Oh, yep, here we go. Oh, perfect. Look, they're all there. OK, I'm going to go back to present mode. Perfect. Thank you, David, for that support. I was quietly panicking. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so, I'm sure you were too. <laughs> OK, so we've got um, challenges that people are experiencing. Communication. Someone said none, which is great. Uh, nighttime driving, how to get involved in that. Um, local industry experience, lack of stakeholder involvement for nighttime visibility response from delays from fabricators, coordination among various units. Uh, most states already have backplates. We should learn from them. Um, not getting response from other team members of EPD. Uh, just announced need to develop greenhouse gas performance measures and targets likely will become major focus, slowing down the progress of other related work. OK, uh, another one for nighttime safety challenge is slow responses by PSENG. Um, HPIC implementation into projects, time, lack of stakeholder involvement. OK, these are all really good. Um, input if if anyone would like to elaborate on anything um, that they they put in please speak up otherwise we can have um some conversations after this meeting internally to see how we can help you need project or need pilot project to facilitate implementation for internally cured concrete okay well we have potential um you know funding for that uh, not having the right SMEs involved, EPD initiative. OK. All right, thank you very much for all that valuable feedback. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, OK, so this next one was how can the stick leadership team provide support to achieve the two year goal for implementation? We've got webinars, regular updates, FHWA webinars and peer exchange for nighttime visibility backplates. Send a survey asking for interest in each topic outside of Menti. OK. Right. Does anyone have anything else that they would like to add to this before I move on to the next one?
And, you know, outside of this mentee, you know, you can always reach out to me or anyone on the STIC uh, executive team to um, ask for assistance. Okay, someone, you know, communications, of course, webinar, dedicate budget or job number for subject matter experts, grants to local agencies. Okay. Continue to foster an environment of innovation. That's definitely something that we are, we are very passionate about. And you'll be hearing a little bit more about um, what we're working on for innovation outside of, you know, our stick. Okay, thank you very much for your feedback. Okay, featured innovations. Thank you very much for the feedback you just provided. And please answer the following questions just generally about innovation. Um, and, innova and innovation can be from this or prior rounds of the EDC program or from other noteworthy transportation initiatives. Okay, I'm getting some thumbs up on that. Next, what innovation in New Jersey should be more widely shared with the stick members and others? Like I said, it could be from everyday counts or others that are outside of the box. And this is another one. Uh, short answers are recommended and you have 200 characters. I think I might have to advance the next slide to see the results. Oh, nope. Let's go back. There we are. All right, the laser based road condition sensors. OK. And I'm assuming those are the ones that were just discussed um, for the weather savvy pilot. AI technology implementation. Jug handle. Public transportation innovations. Definitely one of our partners is New Jersey Transit. We do a lot of research projects with them as well. <clears throat> New technologies. Now, is that in general or is that new technology, the new technologies group that we have here at NJDOT? The apps of all sorts for mobile phones, new traffic implementations, innovations in carbon reduction. Yes, that's definitely a hot topic, carbon reduction. And we, uh, Amal Patel and my research staff, he's a member of the working group for that. In NGDOT. Okay. I guess that was an answer to my question about the new technologies. Um, yeah, my research um, staff and I, we have, we're going to be setting up a meeting with the new technologies group, um, hopefully after the new year, to find out, you know, more about them. They've always been a member of the stick, but we would really like to form a really solid partnership with them, find out their structure, how they work. Um, and how we can work really hand in hand with them in coming up with um, new technologies and evaluating new technologies on the market. Someone's agreeing with the AI recommendation, research implementation, return on investment, okay. AI, how the innovations tie to funding availability, safety innovations in technology, traffic signal systems, especially related to get users off of their phones. Yes, definitely an issue. Okay, thank you so much for those 15 or 17 responses. Here we go. Um, AI is another, another one, specifically how to better utilize large data sets with AI. I think um, coming up at the TRB meeting in, in January, I think AI is gonna be a really hot topic. Sustainable materials, most prominent UHPC providers are based out of New Jersey. There's room for collaboration. Mm -hmm. Becoming national leaders in UHPC applications for sure. 
Okay, thank you so much for that input and those ideas. We'll definitely be capturing some of them in our future stick meetings. Okay, next question. What innovation has your organization advanced that offers useful lessons learned for others? Again, it could be everyday counts or others that are outside of the box. UHPC. Implementation marketing. Bridge deck extension details, okay. Working with smart growth and urban planning. Someone said generic version of UHPC. Process improvement innovations. The drone program from EDC5, like I said, just because it's a, you know, in a certain EDC round, it doesn't mean we stop working on it. We've got a great drone, prog drone program here at NJDOT. Safety countermeasures and safe system approach. Dispute boards for complex construction projects. Okay. Benefit cost analysis of research. Foam glass aggregate applications. One of the first applications in the nation was in New Jersey. Yes, we did have um, someone, uh, Kim Sharp, presented for us on the foam glass aggregate. And she also, um, I know she presented to the commissioner recently. Very interesting process and in, of how it's made and, and the application for sure. Jointless bridge decks. Okay. All right, adaptive signals, red clearance time, extensions, passive pet detection, and lead pedestrian interval. Okay, great. These are great responses. Okay, I've got another one coming in. I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, New Jersey crash, integral, and semi-integral abutment details. Thank you so much. Great. Okay, next, what innovation case study video would you like to see? Um, as you know, under the NJDOT tech transfer program, uh, we have tasks set aside and, and funding set aside to create high quality uh, videos. So if any of your units or um, entities are interested in producing with us um, a video highlighting a case study on innovation, please definitely reach out to us and, and Put your idea down here so we can work with you. We work with Civic Eye Collaborative and they're really great. They've done a lot of um, research to implementation videos. They've done um, a lot of our Build a Better Mousetrap videos. Um, they've done you know meeting recordings for, for our stick. And it's a great way to to get the word out about what you're doing. And we also have a good relationship with the communications office where we get some of these videos and like kind of like a trailer version of the videos put on NJDOT social media. New Jersey crash, UHPC again, high value research, tower lighting, before and after scenario, any innovation such as AI or resiliency improvements, okay. And I'm going to move on here's the crash demo to the next slide. Have an idea or innovation you would like to share. Uh, if you don't mind, please leave your contact information here. And as you know, we're always here 
phone call away, MS Teams chat away, email, any way that you would like to reach out to us. Um, you know, if you think of something later on, definitely reach out to us. But if you want to pop your contact information in here, that would be helpful. Okay, and um, for time purposes, I'm gonna move on. Uh, like I said, please just shoot us an email with some contact information if you wanna share that. Okay, so thank you so much everybody for um, participating in that. We got some really good feedback and I think we have a lot to work with. So hopefully we can support you in any way that we can. All right, so now I'm going to stop sharing this. And go back to. All right. Give me one moment. I get situated again. OK. All righty, so now for some announcements and reminders before I let you go for the day. We were uh, ahead of schedule now. We're a couple minutes behind schedule, but I'll try to be quick. Um, so as always, make sure you bookmark our tech transfer website, which hosts the New Jersey Stick webpage, where you can find all of our stick business, articles about innovations that we're working on, uh, meeting recordings and summaries, uh, stick incentive grant guidance, and much more. Uh, next, the Bureau of Research welcomes all of you to submit ideas for research and or innovation in our ideas portal. It's open to the public uh, and once you easily register for an account, you can submit new ideas or browse, comment. You can even up, upvote existing research and innovation ideas and get interactive with your colleagues. Um, if you'd like your idea to be considered by our research and innovation oversight committee in January, the deadline is December 31st, 2023. Uh, so please feel free to share the link below um, with your colleagues and uh, your networks and promote the submission of new ideas. You can also access the portal through our tech transfer website. So speaking of innovation, I just wanted to invite Dr. Giri Venkatila. He's the research scientist, too, of um, my staff. He's our lead researcher, and he wants to talk to you a little bit about something that we're currently working on. Thank you, Amanda. Hi, good morning, all. I don't want to take much of, of your time. Uh, I just want to give a quick update, and we are so excited to announce that we are currently working on NJDOT Innovation Grant Program. So this program, we, we are thinking to roll out uh, in next year, sometime in April. Uh, the main goals of this uh, grant program is to encourage innovations and integrate technologies and also encourage public and private collaborations. So each year we are planning to have some priority areas and in those areas we are going to invite uh, the proposals for innovations. Uh, by the end of this program, we are hoping that, you know, so one of our innovations or research can move up to the EDC level. So that is our overall goal of this program. So we'll, we'll be furnishing more details in next STIC meeting. So uh, we'll keep updating you on this program. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Gary. OK, so next we have $100,000 in stick incentive funding on the table, and we need your help identifying projects to utilize this funding. Uh, these funds can be used to help advance your EDC efforts. So if there was any challenges or problems regarding funding your efforts, uh, this is your chance. We've developed some guidance to help our applicants out, and you can find that guidance on the tech transfer site. And I also have a dedicated contract administrator who's willing to assist applicants as well, because I know it can be a little bit tricky um, navigating through that whole um, grant administration uh, process. And um, it, the link in blue has all the information that you need to get started. But if you have any questions about the program or ideas for a project, please feel free to contact me. And the other link, the white link at the bottom um, is 
a link on FHWA's stick webpage that shows all the different ways other states have used stick incentive funds. Um, and it's really amazing just how many types of projects have utilized the stick incentive grant. It can be used for modeling, developing strategic plans for your unit, pilot projects. I mean, we just heard about a couple, a few pilot projects that have had great success. Um, and we could really utilize this funding for that. Procurement of safety devices, development of specifications for UHPC, uh, for specifically for culvert lining repairs, uh, pilot of a, a debris removal tool, peer exchanges, workforce development pilot program. Um, really, this list goes on and on. These were just the ones that were done in 2023 um, recently, but the list goes on and on, and I encourage you, if you're thinking of doing something, go to that link um, and really look at some of the examples and maybe you'll be inspired um, to reach out to us. Okay, so the last announcement um, heading into 2024, we're going to be moving from a quarterly schedule to a triannual schedule. So we'll be meeting three times a year, but don't worry. Um, the executive team, uh, we met a few weeks ago where the idea was proposed and it received, you know, some positive feedback as well as uh, some backing for, from leadership. Don't worry, uh, we'll be still participating twice a year in the national stick network calls and you'll get invitations to those as well to hear about what the other sticks um, across the nation are doing. We will also, of course, be participating in every round, every EDC round as a summit. Uh, we'll be participating in those. And of course, we always have a New Jersey specific caucus at, um, when each new round of EDC comes out. Um, so we'll still be participating all, all of those. We still will be giving you regular updates and um, news on that. So don't don't worry. We're still you know, we're not going anywhere. We're just cutting back one meeting. Uh, so calendar invitations will be coming to your inboxes soon. So when you see them, please just accept them right off the bat. Um, so they populate onto your calendars and so that you have that as a placeholder. And, you know, if something comes up, we totally understand. You can, you know, always change it to tentative or whatever suits your schedule best. But um, so just look forward to those meeting invitations. And um, is Eric still with us? I know he had said that he had um, another meeting, um, but you know, at this time, I usually turn it back over to the assistant commissioner to give you know some closing remarks. So, on behalf of Eric, thank you so much to our guest speakers, our CIA teams, all of our council members, our implementation teams that work so hard, members and friends, and thank you so much for um, helping me out, Geary. And I probably is not here right now, and Kamal, um, helping me get this meg um, this um, meeting off the, uh, you know, off to a good success. Um, uh, let's see who else. Kim Ferguson, again, thank you so much for being another one of our guest speakers today. Um, Fondana, your team did amazing today on the feature presentation, so thank you so much. And uh, Megan, also thank you for your support and for being here as our um, director. And um, I think that is it. So if there's any questions or last minute comments, that is my last slide. Okay. Can All right, I say so, happy holidays, everybody? Yes, happy, happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good job, Thank Amanda. You. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Bye everyone. Take care, everyone. Thank you. I think Amanda That's Stephanie good. raised her hand. Yeah. Oh, Steph. Yeah. Oh, Is she gone? I think she's gone. Okay, I'll I'll reach out to her. Happy holidays. Thank you, Richard. You as well. All right, everybody, signing off. Take care. Okay, Amanda, thank you. Bye-bye.